This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whatever you make, they'll help you create your home on the internet. We finally know what Apple's been working on all this time with their big CPU transition to their own silicon, and they're calling it M1. That is the name of the new CPU that is on the three new computers we'll be talking about today. And I wanna dive into how they will affect photographers, filmmakers, and other creative types because we have our own special requirements for our computers. So let's see if these new Macs are gonna do what we need. First, let's get everyone up to speed. The M1 chip is Apple taking everything that they've learned from iPads and iPhones over the years and applying it to the Mac. Intel was a little too slow on delivering new fast chips. And meanwhile, Apple's been crushing every other mobile processor's benchmarks. So now that same speed of development can come to the Mac. The chip has four high performance cores and the crazy spec that Apple threw out. And I, I wanna see some verification from the PC blogging world on this. When it comes to low power silicon, our high performance core is the world's fastest CPU core. And then it also has four efficiency cores, which is why it can run for a very long time. The battery in life has nearly doubled in some cases, or fully double. They say it's up to 20 hours if you're watching video on the MacBook Pro. And then there are also 16 neural engine cores. And an interesting thing they left out was clock speeds. They didn't even talk about it. And let's talk about these both in terms of the hobbyist photographer filmmaker and the professional. We do this for work, this is our studio, so that's how I'm looking at it. But I know a lot of people out there love photography, love taking videos, but just because it's not your job doesn't mean you don't take it seriously. So the computers announced are the MacBook Air, a 13 inch MacBook Pro, and a new Mac mini, all supporting the new M1 chip. Great news, if photos and videos are mostly something you do out of passion and not for work, you can grab any of these computers and they're looking like they'll be amazing for you. They are faster than what they're replacing. And that's good news, because I spent a few years on the older 13 inch MacBook Pro. Like, it's qu quite a bit older now. I edited dozens of 4K YouTube videos that are still on the channel. And it worked, it's definitely fast enough. It ran Lightroom, I edited photos all the time. Like this was my main computer for two or three years. And now that computer is old. And meanwhile, the new M1 chip is way faster. So I have a feeling that whatever it is you do, you can do a bit of it on any of these machines. Obviously, if you have any intensive workflows, you're probably gonna wanna hold on because Apple will release something else we don't know yet they're going to do something more professional eventually because they've said within two years the whole line will be replaced we just got to be a little more patient to see what that is so if the macbook air looks good to you i mean apple was showing off being able to edit multiple tracks of 4k prores just from a macbook air which is amazing and i totally believe it too because the m1 processor is faster and more powerful than the a14 that is inside of ipads and iphones today and those edit 4K video like a hot knife through butter. It's really impressive. There's actually a lot of examples lately where some of the newer cameras like the Canon R5, that's what I'm shooting on right now, it runs really slow on computers that aren't completely new just because there's some hardware decoding that needs to happen. It works just fine on an iPad. So there is a very good reason to expect that any video or photo files that you throw at these will go through just fine. Sony FX9 HDR 10-bit footage. I'm going to bounce this as a 10-bit H.265. Now, in the meantime, I have the iPhone 12. Same file, export. So this is on a battery, about 20% left, no fan. And this is a decked out iMac. You're gonna start running into limitations as your projects get bigger. Like if you have a lot of different layers of really high megapixel files, yeah, of course, you're gonna have the same issues as always. And another limitation on all of these is RAM. And that is a limitation of the M1 chip. It can only take up to 16 gigabytes. That is enough to get work done, but if you need more than that, you're gonna to have to keep buying Intel Macs for the time being. And another great thing, bringing the MacBook Air into the future is it now has a P3 display, so you're not really making any sort of display sacrifice. You can trust what you're seeing in the colors on that screen, whatever the work is you're doing. I think the biggest limitation for me anyway is that the most ports on any of these is two, and that is also a limitation of the M1 chip. It's just what it can handle. I often use three. Um, my current computer has up to four, uh, th that would kind of slow me down sometimes. So just think that through and be aware of your habits before you jump into something that has less ports than you might need. It's gonna be so interesting to see what our performance gains look like because it's not gonna be completely even across the board. For example, Apple was talking about that 
in Final Cut Pro, 3D text can now render up to 5.9 times faster. That's insane and amazing, but you know what? All of Final Cut's not gonna run 5.9 times faster. It's, it's just 3D text rendering. So we're gonna see these little differentiations depending on exactly how it's using the GPU and CPU and neural engines and, and all that stuff. So we're gonna to need to run a ton of tests to really figure this out. But some of those multiplication numbers are, are really incredible. So a feature we lost is support for eGPUs. So if you are gonna use something like the Blackmagic external GPU, even that doesn't work on these new computers yet. Someday, I hope, it'd be nice. But on the upside, the Mac Mini and MacBook Pro did gain support for 6K displays, which means they can run the Apple Pro Display XDR if you want to combine those. Since you clicked on this video, I'm gonna assume you shoot photos or videos, right? And you probably want to show them off. Well, I can tell you exactly how you should be doing that. You should go to Squarespace because they are the best place on the internet to showcase your work. In just a few minutes, you can build a full portfolio that is designed exactly to your brand specifications, has your colors, has your logo, and using their mobile responsive templates, it just takes a few minutes to adapt what their professional designers have already put together for you. And without any design experience, you can quickly slap something together that looks like you put way more effort into it than you actually did. And this is great whether you understand the technical side or you just wanna focus on the content, you don't really wanna spend all of your time troubleshooting in the back end. Squarespace takes care of that for you. They have deep analytics that show you exactly how your website is performing. They manage all of that important SEO so that people can find you through web pages, which is very difficult to do on your own. I've tried it with other open blogging platforms and you need to download plugins, you need to do a bunch of research. No, Squarespace, they just take care of it for you. So next time you have a great idea that you wanna get on the web, don't put it off because it seems too hard. Just go to squarespace.com and you can start building your site today. By the time it's done and ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman and using offer code Tyler Stallman, you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for supporting this channel and for hosting my portfolios since I first ever started making portfolios. <laughs> Let's start with Big Sur, the latest update to Mac OS. I've been running the beta for quite a few months now, actually doing most of my work on it, and it's been fine. It's been mostly stable. It feels a lot more like iOS, so it's kind of like bridging that gap. But the crazy stuff, the things that will change the world in terms of creative production, I wasn't able to test yet. And that's that you're gonna be able to use apps from iPad and iOS and run them on your Mac. And if you're a good creative and don't obsess over the latest software, you spend all your time editing, you may not have noticed that it's been much slower production of exciting new photography and filmmaking tools on the Mac compared to on all of iOS. There are so many apps doing incredible things and they run extremely fast. And those things have just been completely missing or much slower to be picked up on the Mac. Some quick examples are film emulation like Visco and Darkroom or smart AI stuff like the face replaces in face app or replace face. What are all these apps called? I forget. Or Instagram filters. Actually, that's a great example. Look at the amazing things people could do with Instagram filters. And that's using all of the machine learning and the way that things are optimized on a phone. And it's easy to develop and write for those platforms. And that's not happening on computers. I don't want to get too stuck on this point, but in a few years, we will look back and this will be the big thing that changed it all is it will become trivially easy to do some incredible effects that used to take a ton of work for hobbyists or professionals back before the M1 chip and the Apple Silicon transition. And to be clear, if you just upgrade to Big Sur, this won't work for you. It is the M1 chip that makes this possible. Some of the features Apple talked about having huge advantages are things that will rely on those neural engine cores. There's a ton of them in there. And we've been seeing this more and more in a lot of applications. A good example is Luminar AI. I just showed this off in a recent video. I don't, I don't know what their release schedule is. I don't know when they can take advantage of this, but once they dip into those neural engines and use the machine learning to drive their AI processing, we're gonna see fantastic results. Already Adobe was talking about things like object selection being massively faster or Final Cut's intelligent cropping. And we're just gonna see much more development in this area because it's just gonna work so much better. Mark my words, machine learning. I mean, if you want to work in commercial film or photo, 
learn some of it right now because it's going to matter in the future. Speaking of work, we did hear about Adobe's plans. Apple said that they'll be releasing a new version of Lightroom next month and Photoshop sometime in early 2021. That's great to hear. But a big thing that seemed to be missing is Adobe was not showing anything from Lightroom Classic. That's what I use. That's what most of my pro photographer friends also use either that or capture one like big catalog systems where you store all of your files locally what apple was showing off is lightroom cc and that is much more consumer friendly i mean it's a great app it's just not really made for huge local hard drive libraries and stuff like that so uh, this makes me a little bit worried that we just won't see lightroom classic move forward adobe please keep supporting it i did reach out to capture one since i've been using that a lot more lately and they said they're working on it, uh, so no date about Capture One coming soon, but all of that, that's really important to have native support on this M1 chip. But that's just for them to run natively. Right out of the gate, they will work fine using Rosetta, and Apple actually made an interesting point that depending which computer you're upgrading from, you may still have better performance running these apps in emulation than you did running them natively on your older computers. So I wouldn't worry about it that much, and they'll all catch up eventually. Apple was very thin on specifics in this keynote. They kept saying it's two times, three times, four times faster, but you didn't always know what that was in reference to. They showed some charts about how much better it performs than top selling PCs, but you don't know what that PC is. And there's no numbers on the side of the chart. I mean, basically they, they haven't really told us much yet. We're gonna have to do our own benchmarks. We're gonna be finding this stuff out once machines arrived. But we did find out one interesting tidbit. The Mac Pro can play back 8K ProRes footage in full quality in DaVinci Resolve without skipping frames. And that's pretty darn good because not every machine can do that now. So seeing this integration of hardware and software is very exciting. I wish that Apple's Aperture app was still around today. Rest in peace. It'd be really cool to see a professional first party photography app from Apple right now, but I don't think it's coming back. So which one should you buy if you should buy any at all? Well, if one of these seems perfect for you, I, yeah, jump out and grab it. I mean, I ordered a 13 inch MacBook Pro right away, just a base model, basically to test it out for this channel. But um, you know, in the future, I'm gonna want whatever the biggest thing they have is. But if you like small computers and you take photos and shoot videos, don't be afraid to pick up any of these three computers because it looks like they can handle it. Anyway, this is all just based on what I've seen so far. I'm gonna have one in my hands soon. So if you subscribe and come back, we'll talk about it more then. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.